Well, greetings from Bora Bora. Woo! Bora Bora! <laughs> Life wasn't always this way. Talk about humble beginnings. Let me tell you some humble beginnings. I served eight years in the United States Marine Corps. I was a single father after getting out, divorced, bankrupt. And uh, I thought I'd never be able to travel again. I barely can even pay my rent. I could barely pay my car payment. When I'm starting my business, I would have to hit block ID or, or, or reject calls because as I was making calls to grow my business, <laughs> I'd have my bill collectors calling me at the same time. So very uncomfortable conversation, starting a business, thinking the irony of where I am in terms of, here I am trying to grow a financial services business, but yet I'm behind on my bills. But I knew very quickly I had to rapidly turn that around. So that's why I got three jobs to make sure my bills, my business business was paid, my basic expenses as a single father, three kids was paid. And I started growing and scaling, understanding and adopting sales, understanding what sales was all about, understanding that I really had to understand financial literacy and business um, acumen. And so that's where my bandwidth started to grow in this. And I was a very bad academic student, but when it came to making money, when it came down to how to put bread on the table, roof over a head, and create opportunities like this where I can travel the world with my family, my wife, my children. I became a very, very good student. Why? I got sick and tired of just being pushed around by life. And so the biggest areas that has helped me in terms of understanding what my potential was, and where many of you that follow the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel is that we don't realize how great we can be unless we're pushed and the pressure is on. So some of you might be going through a situation. Some of you might be going through a pressure situation where it's very, very uncomfortable. And I've said this in my book, In Faith Made Millionaire. I said, when you're in the worst position, you're actually in the best position because that's when God wants to do something with you. That's when God wants to break you down and say, listen, is my child going to open up and allow me to work with them? And God wants to work to you and God wants to work through you. And that's what I just felt. I said, God, you didn't put me in this position to just leave me here, did you? I mean, fine, work with me. And so that's why I shared my book. At 30 years old, I got my head out of my you-know-what. And not only started growing financially, growing entrepreneurial, but I also started growing, most importantly, spiritually. When I'm looking at my wife, I'm looking at my children. I went through my previous marriage and went through a blended family type of situation where it was just so stressful because, you know, you got different parties, different parents, such a co-parent. A lot of stress. But when you look at a country like this, you look at the French Polynesia, you look at Bora Bora, you're just inspired by things like this. So I encourage you, what's your next? What fires you up? Favorite question I ask a lot of entrepreneurs is, what's your next? What excites you the most? What are you excited about? So here's three things I'd love for you to keep in mind. When building your biz, your aspirations, and you get into your next, is number one, if you're out there and you're single, just like I was single, Spouse was everything. Who you marry matters. You now, somebody said, Well, Matt, I'm either dating right now, I may, may not be in the right relationship. Great. I've often said, reference the Bible, reference Proverbs chapter 31. It was written by the richest and wisest king to ever live. His name is King Solomon. He was the son of David. Many of you may know the story in the Bible where David slayed Goliath. And uh, because of sin, God did not bless David, He blessed His son, Solomon. And then when Solomon took over the reign of Israel at 20 years old, in a dream, in 1 Kings, God says to him, what do you want? What do you want to lead? And uh, he says, do you want women? Do you want money? Do you want fame, fortune? Do you want territory? Do you want a big army? All the things that would tempt a young man. King Solomon responded by saying, listen, Lord, I love all that, man. But listen, if you really want me to lead your people, I need one thing. And he says, what? He says, I need wisdom what wisdom and god was pleased of course i'm paraphrasing this you need reference in your bible yourself in first kings and he says not only will i give you wisdom but i'll give you everything that you didn't ask for because you asked for wisdom and so if you're looking at your spouse you're looking at your boyfriend girlfriend situation i ask both of you the parties that whoever's together because who you marry matters one of the biggest things I don't worry about Sheena with is she doesn't worry that I'm not home at six o'clock at night for dinner. Do you know why? Because she bought onto the same vision and dream that I did. And she wants to work and she's part of the business too as well. Now, some of you say, well, my wife doesn't ever want to be part of the business. I get it. 
but just make sure your spouse doesn't give you a hard time because you got big goals, dreams, and aspirations that you may not be home at six o'clock and seven o'clock. You may not be home on every weekend because you're out there traveling or you're creating accounts and establishing your business. Now, I've been blessed that Sheena wanted to be in business with me and be my partner together in business with me. That's just the way we're wired. So that's why I reference the book, Proverbs chapter 31. It's a, by the way, read it out loud. And by the way, if you want to be a man that attracts women of noble character, guess what you got to be? You got to be a man of noble character. And you just can't have the rest of the world but cheat on everybody else, but nobody cheats on you. You got to honor your commitments. You got to come through with your word. You just can't be get, 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 but no give, give, give on your end. And sadly, that's where a lot of situations where money corrupts men. I'm just take, 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 and I'm the man, I'm the king. The man who gave you that money? Who gave you those resources? Those are, that's not your money, that's not your resource. The man up above, the God in heaven gave you those things. That's the way I look at it. The second part is this. Commit to an industry for at least 10 years. Commit to mentorship for at least 10 years. Commit to working with somebody that you hold yourself accountable to for 10 years. Give yourself 10 years to master something. Give yourselves a decade. Do you know a lot of people see a lot today on social media? Get rich quick. Do it now in 90 days. Do it now in just three, four, five years. And I will say this. I've seen a lot of young men in their 20s and 30s make a lot of money. I was doing it when I was in the 20s and 30s. And I still see a lot of men in their 20s and 30s still doing it. Jumping from industry to industry and changing their philosophy, changing their profile, getting led with money versus being led with principles and values, getting led with the short term versus the long term. Guess what? I find them sadly not earning a long term living. I just had a fire guy who's uh, running my social media stuff in terms of advertising. Thinks he knows everything because he's 28 years old and, and, and his ego is up here and, and, and he said, I'm not wrong and I do this and I, I do things with these guys and da, 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 da. Yeah, but you're gonna take care of this guy. You don't wanna listen to feedback. You don't wanna listen to your customer. The customer isn't always right. True, but in this case, I'm paying your bills, right? I have no problem paying your invoices, but this is where I feel I'm not getting my values and deliverables done. And if you can't answer those questions and you said this and you said that and you're not following through with your word, I'm sorry. Regardless of how good you think you are, you're done. You're going to move forward just without me. But I love this guy. I, I, I love the way he is inspired with his biz. But his ego got the bigger of him. Why? Because he's a king of the mountain. He's he's his god. I learned that a long time ago. It's a, it's a rough road to play. Thinking you're God. Thinking the big man upstairs got nothing to do with your success. This is where humility comes into play. This is where understanding and committing to an inch for 10 years plus will help you understand to be a niche and a leader and a thought leader, an expert in that field. I've done this now for 25 years in one insurance industry, done. I've mastered life insurance, I've mastered retirement planning, I've mastered the things that this industry has to offer. And now I'm having great conversations with people on the hires up on how to create a billion dollar company. Because I mastered one industry. As soon as I got in, I committed, guess what happened? It broadened what I can do, like broadened my capacity, it expanded my bandwidth, I said, wow, a lot of my goals and dreams and aspirations can be fulfilled in this one industry. Interesting. Instead of me trying to bounce, 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 just master one field. And this is a big mistake a lot of people make too as well. They think that having to master and earn multiple streams of income is going to be the path to their financial freedom and financial independence. Zero. Now, I didn't say not be creative. I said you got to master and create your first million, create your first two million before you even think about creating multiple streams of income. We know our stuff. And by the way, I've lived and died by this philosophy. Pick one, pick one, pick one, because it's very easy in the financial services industry to get this license, to get this license, to offer this product, this, blah, 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 blah. So many things. We picked one. And that for us was mastering life insurance and mastering annuities as it relates to retirement planning and generational wealth creation, which leads me to point number three. Point number three is I hope and pray that when you build a business, you build a clientele, you build a team, you build a company, that you serve them. The way you serve your God in heaven is the way that you're going to serve your team. What you do with the least, God can bless you with the most. When I'm thinking about offering mentorship and mastermind, you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about the person I'm coaching and mentoring. I'm thinking about the 25-year-old version of me that could love that coaching and mentoring. I love being able to piece together puzzles, financial puzzles, entrepreneurial puzzles for people trying to put things together. Why? Because I've mastered an industry for 10, 25 years, and I've seen the road that they're on. I see the path that they're on. I see the decisions that they're making. I've been there many, 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 many times, and I'm honored and blessed to be in a position to help people fix those problems. And that's why I look at people. Then I think it's a blessing if I have the honor to be in business with people, and I'm so thankful that they're in business with me. It's an honor for me to have customers because they can do business with any other insurance agency across the world, across the country, but they chose to do it with us. 
seeing my guys financially independent. We're, I mean, we're out here in Bora Bora just having a blast. America rewards innovators and creators and generators and investors, not consumers. So the third part in terms of serving your people, serving your, your clientele, serving your people, highest and best use of your time. And that's building relationships with them for the long term. Now, you may not agree with everybody on a 100% basis all the time, but it doesn't mean it should stop you from broadening, your, again, your skill set and your bandwidth to deal with different types of personality types, different types of people, people that may not share your views. You want those people around you too as well because it makes you a better leader, it makes you better positioned to help others. So as I wrap stuff up here in Bora Bora, what excites you? What's your next? Put it in the comment section below. In the meantime, I hope these three things can help you out understand and how you can live your next best version of you because i promise you you keep these three things in mind you'll be meeting the next best version of you but you gotta go earn it that being said from Dwar bora i'm your money smart guy and until we meet again continue smart continue love smart be money smart today